The later La dynasty Vietnamese, Na Hao La, Chu Han, Hu Li Chao sometimes referred to as the La dynasty the earlier La dynasty ruled only for a brief period was the longest ruling dynasty of Vietnam, ruling the country from 1428 to 1788, with a brief six-year interruption of the Mac dynasty usurpers 1527 to Vietnamese historians usually distinguish the 100-year primitive La dynasty (1428–1527) from 256 years of figurehead emperors of the restored La dynasty (1533–1789). Following the dynasty's restoration by powerful warlords, the dynasty officially began in 1428 with the coronation of Lu Loi after he drove the Ming army from Vietnam. In 1527, the Mac dynasty usurped the throne. When the La dynasty was restored in 1533 they still had to compete for power with the Mac dynasty during the period known as Southern and Northern dynasties. The restored Le emperors held no real power, and by the time the Mac dynasty was confined to only a small area in 1592 and finally eradicated in 1677, actual power was in the hands of the Nguyen lords in the south and the Trinh lords in the north, both ruling in the name of the Le emperor while fighting each other. Their rule officially ended in 1788, when the peasant uprising of the Tay Son brothers defeated both the Trinh and the Nguyen, ironically in order to restore power to the La dynasty. The La dynasty's rule saw Vietnam's territories grow from a small state in northern Vietnam at the time of Le Loi's coronation into almost its current size by the time the Tay Son brothers took over. It also saw massive changes to Vietnamese society. The previously Buddhist state became Confucian after 20 years of Ming rule. The Le emperors instituted many changes modeled after the Chinese system, including the civil service and laws. Their long-lasting rule was attributed to the popularity of the early emperors. Le Loi's liberation of the country from 20 years of Ming rule and Le Tan Tong's bringing the country into a golden age was well remembered by the people. Even when restored Le Emperor's rule was marked by civil strife and constant peasant uprisings, few dared to openly challenge their power, at least in name, for fear of losing popular support. When the Mac dynasty tried to do so, they were not successful and were considered as usurpers and not recorded in official histories by later dynasties. <laughs> Le Tai II and founding of the Le dynasty The founder of the Le dynasty was the hero emperor of Vietnam, Le Loi ruled 1428-1433. Le Loi was the son of a village leader in Tan Hoa province, the southernmost province of Vietnam at the time. When he was born, Vietnam was independent and under the rule of the Tran dynasty. However, the Tran emperors had been weak for some decades and the powerful neighbor to the north, China was now unified and under the rule of the energetic founder of the Ming dynasty, the Hung Wu emperor. As was usual in Vietnamese history, a disputed succession was an excuse for the Chinese to reassert control over Vietnam see the Ho dynasty for further details. The Chinese, now under the Yongle Emperor conquered and ruled Vietnam starting in 1407. They immediately tried to change it into another province of the Ming Empire. Many, if not all Vietnamese customs and laws were declared invalid. Distinctive features of Vietnamese life which had naturally emerged during the nearly 500 years of independence from China were suppressed. All resistance to this effort was treated as rebellion and was dealt with according to normal imperial Chinese methods villages were burned, people were tortured and executed. Le Loi started a revolt against the Ming rulers in 1418. The revolt lasted for ten years during which there was much bloodshed and many defeats. However, the Chinese were gradually beaten and finally Le Loi was victorious. He proclaimed himself the new emperor of Vietnam, gave himself the name Le Tai Tu the founding emperor, and was recognized as such by the new Zande emperor of China. However, after only five years on the throne, Le Loi became ill and died. <laughs> Le Tai Tong Le Tai Tong ruled 1433 was the official heir to Le Loi, but he was only 11 years old. As a result, a close friend of Le Loi, Le Sat, assumed the regency of the kingdom. Not long after he assumed the official title as Emperor of Vietnam in 1438, Le Tai Tong accused Le Sat of abuse of power and had him executed. According to a Mac Trinh version of Complete Annals of Dai Viet, the new emperor had a weakness for women. He had many wives, and he discarded one favorite after another. 
The great scandal was his affair with Nguyen Thi Lo, the wife of his father's chief advisor Nguyen Trai. The affair started early in 1442 and continued when the emperor travelled to the home of Nguyen Trai, who was venerated as a great Confucian scholar. Shortly after the emperor left Trai's home to continue his tour of the western province, he fell ill and died. At the time the powerful nobles in the court argued that the emperor had been poisoned to death. Nguyen Trai was executed as were his three entire relations the normal punishment for treason. Le Nan Tong With the sudden death of the emperor at a young age, his heir was an infant son named Bang Ko. He was the second son of his father but the elder son Gi Dan had been officially passed over due to his mother's low social status. Bang Ko was renamed Le Nan Tong Vietnamese, Le Nan Tong, ruled, 1442-1459 but the real rulers were Trinh Ka and the child's mother, the young empress Nguyen Thi An. The next 17 years were good years for Vietnam, there were no great troubles either internally or externally. Two things of note occurred, first, the Vietnamese sent an army south to attack the Champa Kingdom in 1446, second, the Dowager Empress ordered the execution of Trinh Ca, for reasons lost to history, in 1451. Two years later, 1453, at the age of 12, Le Nan Tong was formally given the title of emperor. This was unusual as according to old customary, Yu's could not ascend the throne till the age of 16. It may have been done to remove the Dowager Empress Nguyen Thi An from power, but if that was the reason, it failed, and the young emperor's mother still controlled the government up until a coup in 1459. In 1459, Le Nan Tong's older brother, Gi Dan, plotted with a group of followers to kill the emperor. On October 28, the plotters with some 100 shiftless men infiltrated the palace and murdered the emperor he was just 18. The next day, facing certain execution the Dowager Empress committed suicide. The rule of Gi Dan was brief, and he was never officially recognized as a sovereign by later Vietnamese historians. Revolts against his rule started almost immediately and the Second Revolt, occurring on June 24, 1460, succeeded. The rebels, led by the last of Le Loi's former advisors, Nguyen Shi and Dinh Liet, captured and killed Gi Dan along with his followers. The rebels then selected the youngest son of Le Tai Tong to be the new emperor. His posthumous name is Le Tan Tong and he was just 17 years old at the time. <laughs> Le Tan Tong Le Tan Tong ruled 1460-1497 was the most prominent of all the Le rulers and one of the greatest emperors in Vietnamese history. His rule was one of the high points in the history of Vietnam, the time of a flood of virtue, Hong Duc, and he has been referred to as the Vietnamese Hammurabi. He instituted a wide range of government reforms, legal reforms, and land reforms. He restarted the examination system for selecting men for important government positions. He reduced the power of the noble families and reduced the degree of corruption in the government. He built temples to Confucius throughout the provinces of Vietnam. In nearly all respects, his reforms mirrored those of the Song dynasty. He led a large and effective army against the Champa and captured the Cham capital, ending the power of the Champa forever. He created a new province out of former Champa land and allowed settlers to go to the new land. Decline of the Le dynasty With the death of Le Tan Tong, the Le dynasty fell into a swift decline 1497 to 1527. <laughs> Le Hien Tong ruled 1497 to 1504. Prince Le Tang, the eldest of Le Tan Tong's 14 sons, succeeded his father as Le Hien Tong. He was 38 years old at the time of his father's death. He was an affable, meek and mild-mannered person. Due to his short period of rule and that he didn't pass many significant reforms, his reign is considered to be an extension of Le Tan Tong's rule. Topic: <laughs> Le Tuk Tong ruled 1504 to 1505. Le Hien Tong chose his third son, Le Tuk Tong, to be his successor. The 17-year-old Le Tuk Tong was portrayed by court chroniclers as a wise emperor who maintained harmony in the court. 
However, he fell gravely ill and died just six months after assuming the throne. Topic: La Yu Wai Muk ruled 1505 to 1509. His older brother succeeded Le Tuk Tong as Le Uy Muk. The first thing the new emperor did was to take revenge against those who had barred him from the throne by having them killed. Among his victims were the former emperor's mother, which was considered a shocking display of evil behavior. Le Uy Muk was described as a cruel, sadistic, and depraved person, who wasted the court's money and finances to indulge his whims. Well aware that he was detested by his subjects, Le Uy Muk protected himself by hiring a group of elite bodyguards to surround him at all times. Among them was Mac Dang Dung, who became very close to the emperor and eventually rose to the rank of general. Despite his precautions, in 1509 a cousin, whom Le Uy Muk had put in prison, escaped and plotted with court insiders to assassinate the emperor. The assassination succeeded and the killer proclaimed himself emperor under the name Le Tuong Duc. Topic. Le Tuong Duc ruled 1510-1516 Le Tuong Duc proved to be just as bad a ruler as Le Uy Muk. He reigned from 1510-1516, all the while spending down the royal treasury, and doing nothing to improve the country. He was heedless to the reaction that his taxes caused throughout the country. His rule ended in 1516 when a group of officials and generals stormed the palace and killed him. Topic. Civil War At barely 14 years old, nephew of Le Tuong Duc, Prince Le Wai, was enthroned as the new emperor Le Chu Tong ruled 1516-1522. As usual when a young emperor came to the throne, factions within the court vied with one another for control of the government. One powerful and growing faction was led by Mac Deng Dung. His growing power was resented by the leaders of two noble families in Vietnam, the Nguyen, under Nguyen Hoang Du and the Trinh, under Trinh Duy Dai and Trinh Duy San. After several years of increasing tension, the Nguyen and the Trinh left the capital Hanoi then called Dong du, and fled south, with the emperor, under their protection. This was the start of a civil war with Mac Dang Dung and his supporters on one side and the Trinh and the Nguyen on the other side. Tan Hoa Province, the ancestral home to the Trinh and the Nguyen, was the battle ground between the two sides. After several years of warfare, Emperor Le Chu Tong was assassinated 1522 by Mac Dang Dung's supporters. Not long after, the leaders of the Nguyen and the Trinh were executed. Mac Dang Dung was now the most powerful man in Vietnam. In the region of Hung Hoa, Tuyen Quang the brothers Vu Van Mat, Vu Van Nguyen or Vu Bao Lords Vietnamese, Chua Bao got out of the control of the Trinh and called themselves Bao Lords. They showed strong support for the La dynasty and refused to accept Trinh family at the early stage of Trinh Nguyen War. Later, they cooperated with the Trinh. Bao Lords lasted for nearly 200 years from 1527 to 1699. Mac Dang Dung usurps the throne The degenerated Le dynasty, which endured under six rulers between 1497 and 1527, in the end was no longer able to maintain control over the northern part of the country, much less the new territories to the south. The weakening of the monarchy created a vacuum that the various noble families of the aristocracy were eager to fill. Soon after Le Chu Tong fled south with the Trinh and the Nguyen in 1522, Mac Dang Dung proclaimed the emperor's younger brother, Le Zan, as the new emperor under the name Le Kung Hoang. In reality, the new emperor had no power. Three years after Mac's forces killed his older brother, Le Chu Tong, Mac Dang Dung ended the fiction that Le Kung Hoang actually ruled by killing him in 1527. Mac Dang Dung, being a scholar official who had effectively controlled the La for a decade, then proclaimed himself the new emperor of Vietnam in 1527, ending so he thought, the La dynasty see Mac Dynasty for more details. Mac Dang Dung's seizure of the throne prompted other families of the aristocracy, notably the Nguyen and Trinh, to rush to the support of the La. With the usurpation of the throne, the civil war broke out anew. Again the Nguyen and the Trinh gathered an army and fought against Mac Dang Dung, this time under the leadership of Nguyen Kim and Trinh Kiem. The Trinh and the Nguyen were nominally fighting on behalf of the Le Emperor but in reality, for their own power. 
Topic. See also. List of Vietnamese dynasties. Stone steel records of imperial examinations of the Le and Mac dynasties. Topic. Notes. Topic. References. Topic. Sources. <references>